Hello friends, have you ever wondered why most of the deserts are located along these regions? Yes, you will see most of the deserts have a specific area where they are formed. The deserts won't form randomly at any place, but it will be formed because of multiple factors. And when you look at the map, you will realize that the deserts are located along this line. Correct, that's the Northern Hemisphere and the same will be case in the Southern Hemisphere as well. The deserts are located along a line. Have you ever thought why is this? Why do the deserts form along this line? Be it the Thar Desert or Sahara Desert or Kalahari Desert, all the important deserts that you heard of are located along the line. The line that is 30 degrees. You know about the latitudes. Why are the deserts located along the 30 degree line? There is geography behind it and in today's class and I'll demonstrate and show you how and why the deserts are located in these regions. So let us start and if you are preparing for UPSC prelims 2025 then an academy has got an offer for you at just Rs 17,999. All the test series and crash courses will be there. If you want further discount use this code A T and F you will get further discount as well. Now let us get back to the topic of the deserts. For the uh, sake of understanding the desert formation, you will first have to understand the atmospheric circulation or how the winds and the air movement is on the earth. If up until now you know that wind is the movement of air, that is totally wrong. No, it is not like this. Wind is the horizontal movement of air. The horizontal motion of air is known as wind. When we talk of the motions, normally we have two types of motions, horizontal motion and vertical motion. See, if I'm here, I can be uh, doing my motion in two ways. First, I can walk like this. This is the horizontal motion. Or if I'm like a spider man, I can climb the wall like this. That is the vertical motion. So normally you will find two types of motions, horizontal motion and vertical motion. When the air has its horizontal motion, it is known as wind. If it is vertical, then it's not known as wind. Now, take a look at this diagram. First. Consider this as the surface of earth and if we have a man here, we have a man standing here, okay, this is a person, I'm not a good at drawing a person but consider this as a human. What kind of motion of the air he will feel? Obviously, have you ever felt something like the air that is lifting you up? Of course, you don't consider tornadoes and other things but normally you will not see something like this or the air pressing you from the top, no. Normally what you will see is this, the movement of air will be like this, it's either coming from the front or from behind like this. These are the kinds, it can come from all the directions like this, 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 these are the directions of the movement of air and these directions are known as wind, when air is traveling in a horizontal motion. Have you ever felt something like this, the wind traveling like this, have you ever been felt like the wind is trying to lift you up? No, so that is not wind. Wind is this direction, these are currents, these are normally known as currents and this is also a possibility in which the movement of air can be like this where the air is ascending up or it can be like this, coming down. So these are all the types of movement of air. This is very important for you to understand why the deserts are formed at specific positions in the world. First of all, know the movement of the air. This is the movement of air and this is also the movement of air. This is known as wind, this is not known as wind. Don't get confused, there are no synonyms. Whatever I am going to tell you, just take it as such. Don't assume things because if you start to assume things, then they will not work at all. This is a very technical topic, that is why I am telling you to understand each and everything. Let's move forward. Now, why is the wind, this will explain later, why is the wind moving like this? Why is it moving horizontally, what's the reason? I'll make you understand with an example of water. Consider this as a surface. And if you put water, pour water here, then there is a uh, most likely that it will not move in any direction because there is no slope at all. If we are supposed to move the water from one place to another, then we have to have a slope like this. If this is the ground and you pour the water here, of course the water will come down the slope. Correct? So for the water to move, there has to be a slope or a gradient. And same is the case with the wind. If we want the wind to move from one place to another, remember wind, horizontal motion. If we want the wind to move from one place to another, we got to have a gradient. 
there should be the pressure difference between the two that means a wind can move from high pressure towards low pressure this is a gradient that's required for the wind to move if there is no pressure gradient if the pressure is same at both the places then there will not be the movement of air the wind will not move and there, <coughs> the wind will not move at all this is how the movement of wind is now let's come to this point the vertical movement of air how does this happen it is related mostly to the temperature if the ground or the air is heated as you know the warm air will rise why because it's less dense same is the case here if the air is going like this if it is ascending or rising this is because it will be heated here if it is getting heated at the bottom then it will rise and if the air is cooling if the temperature is cool it is cooling then it will come down it will not ascend it will descend so this is very important this moment you will need warm air if you want this to ascend and for this thing you will need cold these are the very important things that you need to know and we are going to apply the same things in today's topic and this will explain everything to you how these things are taking place clear about the horizontal moment how the pressure difference is responsible and clear about the temperature how the air will ascend and descend now should i rub this if everything is clear if it's not clear you can just play it back or ask me in the comments as well i will definitely answer you there now take a look at this as i already told you this is the surface of the earth as i already told you the wind will move from high pressure to low pressure clear so this is the high pressure the wind will start from here and move like this and this is the low pressure same can be the case here if we have some high pressure here the wind will come from this direction towards this so what you can analyze here is that the low pressure is the area where the winds will converge low pressure is the area where the winds are converging don't get confused here this is the wind that i'm talking about that is the horizontal motion the winds are converging towards the low pressure belt and high pressure belt it's the inverse of this near the high pressure belt the winds will diverge as you can see this is the high pressure the winds are moving away from the high pressure towards low pressure near the low pressure the winds are converging from both the places clear is this clear now let's move towards the atmosphere how the things are taking place and why is this responsible for the formation of deserts i'll explain it very quickly so that you don't have to waste too much of time now let us start with the surface of the earth this is the surface of the earth okay now let me just a second maybe this color is not visible that much i'll draw it a bit brighter this is the surface of the earth you know about earth we have equator and poles this is your zero degree equator okay what happens at the equator normally there is abundant sunlight on the equator as you know about it if you don't know about it you can read about it on equator you will have abundant sunlight and because of that this area will heat up when this area will heat up the air will start to ascend as i already told you that is why i told you to know about the movement of the air because of heating up of this area the air will start to ascend don't get confused between air and wind uh, again the air is ascending this is not the wind wind is already the horizontal motion the air will start to ascend near this region clear when the air will start to ascend because of the warm temperature this is the ascending of the air okay clear this is the air that is ascending why because of the high temperature but at one point it will start to diverge why when it will reach at the top it will start to diverge clear because you know at the tropopause then it will start to diverge it will not keep ascending forever of course not then it will start to diverge and one important thing that you need to know here is that as the air will ascend due to lapse rate the temperature is less towards the top then the air will start to diverge near these regions after the air will start to diverge like this like this and like this now there is a very important concept that you need to know here this is happening near the equator 
clear about this? This is the equator that I'm talking about. What happens when the air ascends? First of all, tell me that. When the air will ascend, then it will reach a point because of the cold temperature at a height, at a certain height, the temperature will fall and this will result in the cloud formation. So on the equator, what you see is that rainfall is more often than not present at this place because of the formation of clouds. Because the clouds will form near these regions, there will be rainfall. Because the air is ascending and ascending air is associated with rain. When it will rise, then there is the concept of humidity and relative humidity that we learn in the geography, of course. But right now, you have to remember whenever the air will ascend, it will be related to rainfall. That is why you will notice near the tropics, near the equator, there is constant rainfall. You can search it from the Google if you don't believe me. When you look at the tropics or the equator specifically, you will see constant rainfall near the equator. Rainfall almost throughout the year. This is the reason because the air is getting heated up and it's warm when it reaches the top and then it cools down and that results in rainfall. Now that's not important for our desert formation. Once this air starts to diverge, what is happening at the top? The temperature is very less because the temperature is less. As I told you, the warm air rises, but the cold air descends. It will start to descend. Correct. That is the reason here you will see the air will start to eventually descend. This is how the air will start to descend. Okay. This is the descending of the air. Why am I drawing on two sides? You might get confused what's going on. This is the two hemisphere. We can consider it as a northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. This is the flat surface. That's why you might get confused. After we are done with this, I'll show you how it's on the circle or the spherical image of the earth as well. This is how the things are going on. This is descending down. The air is descending down now because of the cold temperature. This will be near 30 degrees on both north as well as 30 degrees south. That means it will ascend on both the sides, 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. Now here comes the most important point of our topic today. That is when the air descends, it results in stability. It results in stability, high pressure system near this place. Now look at this place first, equator, just to clear all the doubts. Because the air is ascending, what is going to happen? You will see a low pressure system here. You will have a low pressure system here. Hey, just imagine the air is getting lifted up. Obviously, you will have a low pressure system at the bottom. But when the air will descend like this place at the 30 degree, what is going to happen? The pressure will be high. You will have high pressure system near the 30 degrees. But the important thing, as the ascending air was responsible for rainfall, the descending air is responsible for stability or dry conditions. You will find dry conditions at 30 degrees. Why? Because the air is descending. It is not allowing the clouds to form. It is making the things dry. That is why the descending air is responsible for formation of dry conditions. Or what I told you in the initial phase was that the deserts, that are located along a line. What was the line? That was the 30 degree line or this is the line that we're talking about. That is why most of the deserts are located along the 30 degree line. This is the main reason for the formation of deserts. There are many things that are associated with this diagram. We can talk of what happens as a 60 degree. At 60 degree, the air will again ascend. Then at the poles, it will again descend. But right now, that is a separate topic. Right now, we only have to look at this part. Why are the deserts formed? That's why. Otherwise, this topic can go on for another one hour if we continue. But right now, this is the main reason for the formation of deserts along the 30 degrees, be it north or south. That is why the reason was the map. If you look at this map, again, now look at this map and answer me. Are you able to find out why the deserts are located mostly along the 30 degrees? You can see you have Sahara Desert, you have Thar Desert, you have Kalahari Desert. Then there is another great sandy desert in uh, here at Takama. There are many deserts that are located along the 30 degrees. I hope you got the reason why the deserts are located along the 30 degrees. Because of the fact that the air is descending near these regions. This is only the one branch. There will be one more branch that will be coming from 60 degrees. That will also descend at this region here. But right now we don't have to look at that because that will make it a very diverse topic right now. This is the main reason how the air is descending at this place. One question that I'd like to ask you is, you can answer me in the comments. 
what happens when the air will descend here what is going to happen here will the air again move towards this or will the air come from this place that is your uh, question that you have to answer me in the comments this is about the formation of the deserts because the main reason is the air that ascended at the poles and the 60 degrees has started to descend over the 30 degree latitude that is why the deserts are located on the 30 degree latitude or this is also known as the horse latitude or the high pressure belt this is known as in the technical terms it's known as subtropical high pressure belt this is a diagram if you want to see it uh, as i told you already this is the zero degree okay this is a zero degree this region is the zero degree equatorial, equatorial region where you will see the ascending of the air clear these are the arrows here these show the movement of trade winds again now what i was mentioning is this region 30 degree region what is the name of this region subtropical high pressure or horse latitude so high pressure whenever there will be high pressure there is most likely to be dry conditions this is the reason for the formation of deserts or the 30 degrees latitude i hope you understood how the deserts are formed and you will be able to answer these questions as well why the deserts are located now whenever you look at the map you might not have noticed uh, it up until now now you will be able to understand why the deserts are located on this line or the 30 degree line i hope it's clear now because of the high pressure formed by the ascending and the descending of the air i hope that's clear if you have any questions you can ask me in the comments see you in the next class bye bye